oh, this, this must be a good one, this, because he's getting in the flipping lake. 30 pound common, the boy. Get in. Bloody arms hurting. I need a cup of coffee before battles like this, mate. Well, that didn't go to plan, did it? Look at the scales on that. What do you reckon, mate? Edwards Lake. Exciting, mate. I'm looking forward to having a go on here. Mate, I'm telling you, the fishing here are incredible. I remember when they went in, in 2021, fairly big fish as well, like mid-20s. Mate, they're not mid-20s anymore. They have, like, grown. And they've hardly been fished for, have they? Hardly been fished for. We are in a very, very privileged situation to come on here before anyone else. There's been a few anglers on, Bayless mainly coming and on, keeping an eye on the place. Um, but yeah, we're very lucky to come and have a little play on this. Well, we just had a lap round, didn't we? And uh, it looks lovely. Water's tap clear in it. You can see the wee beds. You can see those little clean spots that they've already uh, cleaned off. Now, I'm, I'm really excited. If we split up, one fish is either side. We've got all areas covered. They can't hide, can they? What are we thinking about swims? Edge or tails? I'll go heads. Edge for the win. Tails. So you pick. You go on the point. I'll go over there. We've got a good chance, both of us. Yeah? I'm happy with that, mate. Let's smash a few out, mate. I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, and I am, mate. Good luck. <laughs> <sighs> well, that backfired a little bit. So, I actually saw a few fish. While the lads were setting up the cameras earlier, I actually saw a few fish in the margin over there feeding. I saw one show first. Went down and added a little closer inspection. And um, there was a couple of mirrors, literally feeding six foot out off the bank. Now, obviously, Rob did come over here a week ago, fished in this swim, and did really well. And I was convinced that he was gonna go in this swim. Um, so I thought, I won't, I won't say anything about those fish until after the draw. But unfortunately, it backfired. <laughs> <laughs> and Rob's decided to go over there, um, but never mind. We're still in a good area, you know, we've got plenty of options here. This is actually a, a triple swim and I've got all this to myself, so yeah, I'm sure we'll be able to catch a few. Right, Kev, should we get some tackle out, mate? We definitely need another net. Down this marginal shelf, you know, I'm expecting it to be a little bit weedy. You can tell from here there's a lot of silt weed on the marginal shelf. Shallower water, you expect a little bit of weed. So I'm hoping for a nice little clear area that I can place a solid bag on, walk down that margin once I pop the float up and bait via catapult. Social swim in it. Jamie, you ain't got some rods, Kev. And that's it. The staple diet of a Norton Disney carp, pellets and boilies. I'm sure if they're floating around that deep water, that will draw them down. A little pink, maybe even white pop up over the top of that. A little stand out hook bait. Hopefully we'll get some first bite. Nick these out of the lodge just. They smell beautiful. When you say nicked them, you mean? Oh, um, borrowed, um, acquired. Um, testing? Testing, yeah. yeah. D yeah. Didn't steal them. Yeah. I, I was given permission to take these pop ups. <laughs> if I was a car, I'd be all over that. Now, rig-wise, I'm gonna fish three different rigs, and the reason behind that, on the three different spots that I found are completely different. Now, the first spot I found is slightly deeper. It's slightly deeper than the rest of the lake. It's about 14 foot of water, and it came down gradually gravel, and then leveled off. I wouldn't say it was silt, it was just smooth. It was just a very nice, smooth area. 
And on that one there, I've put a fair bit of bait and I fish a bright single pop-up over the top of it. Now, when I fished here last week, pink, without a shadow of a doubt, was the go-to color. That's what I caught pretty much all my bites on. And I'm gonna fish a little pink pop-up over that thermish area. The right-hand margin spot down there, again, it's lovely and clear, granite gravel, and I'm gonna fish a little snowman rig on that. Little 12 mil link topped off with a little pink pop-up also. And this other spot that I actually saw from the bank, it's quite a high bank here, and that's a real shallow area, and it was almost glowing in the sun, and a few fish have already shown over that area, so I'm gonna fish on that one there, just a single solid bag. That could be really good to nick a few bites while these other two spots get going, because there's a bit of bait on them. So yeah, three different rigs according to what I found. Very short range. Oh. That was so bad. <laughs> I'm not used to casting two and a half ounce leads. Christ above. Oh. <laughs> He's only going to put it on the far bank. <laughs> Well, that didn't go to plan, did it? <laughs> I reckon old Stokes, he might have to get booked on with a quarter coach. I'm in. Go on, the bait! <laughs> the last rod to go out, and the first rod to go. It didn't take him long to get on that pellet, did it? Sneaking down that margin, popping the float up, and baiting just behind the float, on the float, very accurately. Got me a bite. From my experiences of last week, you never know what's gonna pop up here. It's cool, we have a line. It won't come any further. We are going swimming. Oh, the cops. Big fish that. Definitely a 30 pounder. Oh, this, this must be a good in this because he's getting in the flipping lake. That ain't a 10 pounder. <laughs> Unless he's very keen. A bit further, sweet up. Get in that net. Get in. 30 pound common, the boy. Get in. It's not a bad start, is it, though? First bite, good 30. Definitely like that house pellet and the little snowman rigs. This rod's been back in position for 10 minutes. I was just sorting the mat out to do pictures of the first one. And this one's pulled up tight. And incredibly, we're back in again. Oh yeah. Come on, yeah. Beautiful in that clear water. So maybe one of the smaller lakes on the complex with only three acres of size. Tell you what, the stock of carp in here is second to none. Go on, get away from you get. Yes. Edwards, I do love you. The lake that just keeps on giving this one. Well, what an amazing start to the session. This absolute cracking scale perfect mirror at 23 pounds and six ounces. And we've got a good 30 pound common. So yeah, fantastic start. But while this one was in the net recovering, I popped my marker float back up down at that spot in the margin. Went round there and took a picture on my phone this time of the, where the marker float is in relation to the sort of my far distance marker. So I haven't got to keep putting my marker float from the future. While I was there, I introduced another 10 or 12 catapults of just the eight mil pellet. And that is definitely keeping them grubbing around. But what a lovely fish. Let's get this one back and have a look at that cracking common. Bloody hell. 34.5. Yes, mate. <laughs> look at that, mate. That is mega, mate. 
the commons in here are powerhouses. <laughs> I was saying to the lads while I was playing this fish, I've yet to catch a common under 30 pounds. That's crazy, isn't it? Like, they're I mean, just... Like, like you were saying, just as it stands at the minute, that, that is a late record, but there are loads of them out there, there like that. Plenty, mate, and I think there's bigger in here. Oh, we've got it down, We've mate. barely touched the surface yeah. over the last couple of weeks of what's in here, and, but yeah, little wafters. Yeah, it's interesting that, mate, because obviously I've put pop-ups out. I think after you put this back, I'm going to fly around there, yeah, wind that rod in and uh, put some kind of a pink wafter on I don't blame you. <laughs> yeah, I'm absolutely made up. Yeah, mega, mate. Good bit of angling, that, you. Cool. I mean, how long did it take you to catch this? 20 minutes, half yeah. hour. <laughs> it didn't take long, did it? <laughs> Incredible. Thank you very much, girl. Mwah. Mega, mate. Fair play. It's a great carp. Right, I've just slipped back that incredible 34 pounder. And before I put this rod back out there, I'll show you exactly what's doing all the bites. And I may even change that middle rod on the pop-up onto this little slow man presentation. But the rig itself, I've got two foot of lead core. Now I've been inch up, because I'm fishing on a fairly firm bottom, I've got a no trace bead system. And on the other end, I've got a mini heli safe. Now I am dropping leads in this situation. It is fairly weedy up there. And I want to make sure that that fish comes to the surface away from all the weed. And the rig itself compromises of about four and a half inches of 20 pound IQ2. And then I've got a little Albright knot, but it's a large loop and this gives me a slip D section. Very, it's, it's a tricky little rig to tie, but once you've tied it and you've got it absolutely perfect, all you've got to do is change your hook. And the hook I'm using is a nice big one, a size four crank. I want that hook nailed to the ground, not sitting up at all, and the hook bait also. I want that, the bottom of the hook bait, which is a 10 mil link, I want that nail to the ground and the pop-up just popping it up. But that bottom of that hook bait is touching the floor. Very, very important. But that's the rig, no tangles, and as you've seen, it catches them. Well, that was a lovely carp I've caught. Do we catch them on myself? But as it stands at the minute, even though they're only over there, I feel a million miles away from them. Well, as far as starts go, it don't get much better than that, does it? 34 pounder on your first bite. This lake is truly special, you know. In the last two years, they've done some growing and the lake's fun, you know. It's a fun bit of fishing over here. Normally, when you're putting your rods out, you know, you're spumming out there and, you know, there's something fun about popping a marker float up, walking down the margin, baiting up lovely and accurate, getting rigs in place, setting traps. I really enjoy that sort of fishing. So if you're into your sort of small lakes, your intimate fishing, get yourself signed up for this because uh, the lake itself's fun and the fish they're speaking for themselves and hopefully we'll get a few opportunities tonight. Now, I've made changes to how I last fished here, um, more so with the depth of where I've been fishing. Now, I've done very well last time. I had six fish on my last trip in a 24 hour period, but it was all daytime bites and there were loads sloshing out there of a night time and an early morning. But as much as I tried, I didn't get a bite. So the first rod I put out there, you know, I put it into slightly deeper water. I was fishing in probably fours and fives last time, um, and now I'm in 14. So hopefully, you know, that deeper water area, we've had a bit more bait out there, will kick into gear throughout the night, and we pick up a few more night bites. But if it doesn't, I'm sure we'll get a few tomorrow, especially done at right-hand margin. To nick, to nick two bites in a day, that's telling me we've got a really, really good zone there. But fingers crossed tonight, the rods are out there mint. Can't get them any better. Hopefully, it's just a matter of time. So they say there's always a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And look where that rainbow's landed. Right on top of his flipping booty. <laughs> oh. Cool, isn't it, that? Yeah, but I'm sure he's going to get a few more. He's well on him. And he's got a rainbow coming out the top of his swim. How about that?
Well, what a beautiful morning we've woken up to this morning. Unfortunately, nothing's happened throughout the night, but that was to be expected. The lads did say they've been getting caught in the days at the minute. I don't think Rob's had anything last night either. Dan rang up last night, and apparently there's loads of fish now turned up in front of the underwater cameras. Oh yeah, baby. Here they come. So I'm keen to get over there and see what's going on. But still, it's been a really enjoyable 24 hours. Rob caught a couple of lovely fish, shows the potential of this lake. As much as I would have liked to have caught a couple myself, at least I got to see a few on the bank. But yeah, like I say, I'm going to pack up. Rob's going to stay on, so I'm sure you'll be seeing plenty more from him. Well, unfortunately, nothing occurred last night, and that does seem to be a running theme here on Edwards, but it's all good because there definitely is a few daytime bites to be had. And when you are in a situation where there's a lot of day bites happening, getting yourself well ahead of the bite time is the key to making the most of it. It's still very early in the morning. It's about half past six. I've reeled the rods in. I'm going to get fresh hook baits in all of them, get fresh rigs, make sure everything is absolutely perfect. And while the rods are in, I've walked down my right-hand margin again. I've eyed myself up with my little stones that I put there yesterday. I'm lined up with that single birch, and I'm going to give them a good helping of that eight mil house pellet again. A good spread, get back down here, get some rods back out, and hopefully we can get a few more of them big ones on the bank. Now I've made a few adjustments, a couple of which hook bait choices and rig choices. And the solid bag that I've been roaming around that shallow area, um, I went from a little pink wafter in there to a little match to hatch one, the same size pellets that the fish get fed on. Yes, yeah, the perfect shape and colour as to what the fish have been feeding on. So you can imagine that little wafter there sitting amongst that bed of pellets. I'm sure if any fish start floating around that, that plateau, there's a good chance. And so yeah, I moved that middle rod onto that marginal drop off. Um, and with the spot being so clear, it didn't need a pop-up rig. Um, I only fished a pop-up last night because at the bottom of that trough, it was just, it wasn't silty by any means or silk weedy. It was just smooth, but I wanted to make sure I was fishing to add a pop-up on there. But now I've got the exact same rig as I caught them two fish on yesterday. My little multi-combi, link bottom bait, little pink almond and topper. And um, yeah, them pinks, you know, I've done really well on them. But that's not to say that yellows or whites wouldn't work. You know, I'm very new to this place as well. 24 hours last week and 24 hours in now. And uh, yeah, pink definitely works, but play. You know, whites could be the one, yellows could be very good. Just fishing accurate, making sure you're on a clear spot, baiting accurately, um, and spreading your rods out like I've done, not just put three in a spot. Um, if I'd put three in a spot at the start, in that deep trough, for instance, I could be sitting here twiddling my thumbs, but by spreading rods out, having one down that margin, everyone gets plenty of water on here. And like I said, the fish get everywhere. There's not a corner of the lake that I've not seen a carp in yet. They come right under your rod tips, so yeah, real fun in fishing. The rods are out now, it's looking good. You know, I must admit, I did half expect one by now, but it does still look very, very good for it. It has been a bit warmer today, so maybe the fish are just a bit more up the marginal shelf. Um, but as the evening comes into it, hopefully they'll drop down and um, yeah, we'll get an opportunity. That's a bite, mate. Oh, Seems to be dinner time all round. No action all day long. I was just about to tuck in some lovely steak and that repositioned solid bag rod with the match to hatch wafter has just absolutely looped round. I'm gonna get a cold steak now, but I do not care. The old solid bags, eh? Never, ever, 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 with an extra ever, let me down. What a beautiful evening. After a long old day of nothing, it looks, oh, I say looks, it looks like we're gonna get rewarded just on dusk. <laughs> Look at the scales on that.
How about that? I don't mind getting interrupted for dinner when they look like that. That is a mega cool Edwards carp. 26 pounds and six ounces and a solid bag muncher. I've always got one on. They always get me out of trouble. It's been flat calm, not a lot going on. But this one here has picked up that little match to hatch hook bait. Absolutely made up with that one. We'll get this one back and I'm sure you guys are wondering how do I get booked onto Edwards in the future? I will tell all in just a minute. Right, a little bit of information and more importantly, how do you guys get booked on to Edwards Lake here at Norton Disney? Now a little bit about the lake first of all. So Edwards Lake gets its name from one of the fishery staff members here, Jordan Edwards. And the lake itself is three acres in size. And 65 hand-picked, absolute worldy looking carp were stocked in here two years ago between upper doubles and mid 20. Now, so the majority of the stock now have whacked on anything between sort of 10 and 15 pounds within that two year period. So it doesn't take much working out to realize we've got a lot of big carp swimming around in here. And hopefully, by the time you guys get to fish it, maybe even our first 40 pounder. The lake itself is booked directly through Norton Disney, and you can do this on an exclusive basis for four anglers at 40 pounds per man per night on either a four-nighter or on a three-nighter, running from either Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, or Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday night. There will be two large double swims on each bank to make it super sociable amongst friends. When you arrive at Norton, you can always ask one of the fishery bailiffs if the lake is booked, and if it isn't, you can always jump over here for a few nights if it's free. Enjoyed today. Really, really, really enjoyed it. It's so quiet over here and all. It's actually quite a relaxing place to be. Normally I stress in my fishing, no, I'll get free ones out there on the money, spawn 20 spawns. Nah, it's been a really, really enjoyable day and uh, yeah, to catch one at the end, always a buzz. You never know, you never know. There might be one, might be one into dark as well. Maybe tonight will be the night, but if it's not, I'll wake up in the morning expecting one more before we leave, you know, that'd be nice. 30 pound would be nice, and I want it on them mirrors. I've seen one, it was 34 pound. Absolute weapon, big linear thing. I want that one. So uh, yeah, the rod's back out there. Um, that one I had the fish on, obviously fresh solid bag, back out there in the zone. Same little match to hatch hook bait, nothing's changed. Got it back out there. And yeah, the rods are out, fingers crossed. Cliche, alarm clocks don't get much better than that. The old margin rod that was consistent on the first day, but done nothing yesterday, has finally jumped into action. And to begin with, it got me in some marginal weed, so I had to walk down the margin and try and get a better angle, and thankfully it worked. So we're now weed free. See my reward, tossing and turning in the water there. These fish do off, hang on. My bloody arms are hurting. <laughs> I need a cup of coffee before battles like this, mate. These have got to be some of the most hard in fighting fish I've ever had the pleasure of playing. Incredible fight. All of them. If she comes, one more little turn. I beat ya. <laughs> what a fight. All of them. <sighs> God. That's how we like to start the day. What a carp. You can always rely on first light for a bite. And this one didn't disappoint. Just under 24 pounds. And that's now nine fish I think I've had from Edwards and not a single fish under the 20 pound barrier. It goes to show you what a lake it is already, never mind in the future. Get yourself booked on, this place is going to be something special. I've thoroughly enjoyed my few nights here. 